Greetings everyone, if you're here, welcome to the Demo Hub. In today's video, we're going to go through a demonstration showcasing how to take advantage of building your own LLM large language model chatbot right on your data in Snowflake, leveraging the power of Streamlead and obviously the OpenAI uh, API. The two things are needed for the demo for today. You're going to either need to follow the labs, which links to this will be in the description below from GitHub, clone that, or you can go ahead on the quick start guide and follow the instructions uh, step by step. Either way will lead to the same result. The end result of what we we'll build will look something like this, a chatbot that interacts with your data, giving you results in natural language. Pretty, pretty cool. All right, that's it. Let's jump in. Let's begin it. by cloning this repo using your favorite uh, method of cloning. This should show up within your Visual Studio Code. I went ahead and did the cloning in Visual Studio Code. We now have a project ready to go. Everything has been cloned. The app and the source code is all available. The first thing, go to .streamly. There is an example, the .toml file. Make the changes to this file to point to your specific environment. In this case, the open AI key needed, your Snowflake ID, as well as the user and the roles that are needed. Now, once you have that uh, set up, next take a look at some of the source code. There is a SQL file as well as about four or so Python files. Now the SQL file, we're going to log into the Snowflake environment to run this SQL file to provision the table and the schemas and a few other objects we need for this demonstration to run. There is also a bunch of Python files. These are actually Streamlit applications that will run leveraging the data we have in Snowflake for the chatbot. There is a simple version of the chatbot. There is a Frosty app, which is the main version of the chatbot. There is also a validate credentials. Once you have all your credentials set up in, oh, let's go back one more time, in the secret, you can validate that you actually have connectivity to both Snowflake as well as to the open AI. Now, before we jump in and start running code to validate our credentials, we're going to want to make sure we have the right environment set up. There are some requirements that are needed. Snowflake, Snowpark, Python, Streamlit is needed, OpenAI is needed. So to run this, we're going to have to run those dependencies. Right now, my environment is base, but typically you want to use Conda to create a Conda environment or PIP to create a PIP environment and leverage that. The good news is there is some commands we can use. You can type them yourself or you can simply copy, go back over the quick start guide, go to prepare your environment on the quick start guide. It gives you the exact commands you need based on your environment. In this case, we can do a conda create a new environment as such. Simply copy that and run if you haven't. Depending on the type of hardware you have, you might have to run uh, different versions of these commands. I did that already. We're going to go ahead and activate the environment with Conda Activate Snowpark LLM Chatbot. The environment has been activated. Obviously, you can verify that by seeing the right environment here. We're now set to go. Again, links to all of this is in the description. You can see the exact commands to run. Now, to validate the credentials within secrets, the Tomo file ahead and run Streamlit. So obviously we're running Streamlit app now. We're going to do Streamlit run and go into the source and validate credentials.py. Takes a few seconds. The app opens up and now we have the app uh, running, showing us there is a result here. This is all good. Now, the next thing to do once we have the app running is to take advantage of actually setting up Frosty. To do that, let's uh, go ahead and execute this code. You can leverage the Snowflake uh, extension from Visual Studio Code to run this. Alternatively, you can copy this code over into a worksheet and have that code executed uh, within the worksheet. Create a new worksheet. Call this uh, Frosty setup. That will be the worksheet we need here. Here's that code. Just for the sake of understanding what's happening here, we can see there is a create database. If that exists, go over to the left side. I don't have a database here called Frosty Sample. Okay. Now create a schema and then a view. And this view is coming from 
this cyber scene, financial, economic, essential. So some really good stuff here. Go ahead and check through the code just to verify. Once you're done, run this. All right. It does complain that this database doesn't exist. And the question is, where do we get this database from? This is the beauty of the marketplace. Go over to the marketplace. There is a provider here called the uh, cyber scene. Uh, search by provider name or simply type for cyber scene, uh, cyber scene. We find cyber scene in here. They have a uh, different marketplace uh, data set. So the one we're looking for is called cyber scene, financial, economic essentials. Take a look for that. It's right there in front of us, cyber scene, financial, uh, economic essentials ahead and get this in one click this data has shown up within our environment uh, to use query this data just to be sure it takes a few seconds here we do have this cyber scene financial economic data now showing up within a database and there is a schema there for for cyber scene a bunch of views and very good switch back over let's uh, refresh this one more time the database now shows and the name uh, matches what we expect cyber scene financial economic essentials and that's good. Go ahead and run this. Excellent. This setup is all done. The scripts run. So just copy the scripts as such. If you don't have this from the marketplace, go ahead and grab that from the marketplace. The results do show here as we expect. The setup is good. We've done the frosty setup on the Snowflake site. That's all we need. Now we're ready to go back into the app to continue the work. Setup is done. We've validated uh, our credentials. Now go ahead and run a simple chatbot. It's actually beautiful to run the simple chatbot before we go into the more advanced uh, chatbot. Do a streamly run, start with the simple chatbot. It takes a few seconds for this to pop up. Voila, this is popping up here. We now have a, a chatbot, Frosty, coming up. How can I help you? Morning. Mm -hmm. Just uh, freestyle, any interactions you can imagine. Something just very simple, nothing to write home about. And Frost is thinking, so this is an application. Obviously, it's extremely running, not yet interacting with that data. It's not using our data just yet, but you can see it's giving us some good results. This is an experience that you might be familiar with, with ChatGPT and, and Bird. So we're getting all of this here in Snowflake. All right. So this is good. We can keep going. I think the goal here is not to show us how to do prompting. The goal is to show us how to set up this app to work with your own data. So now I'm going to go back, clear this and the app we actually want to run. And I encourage you to go through and take a look at the code It's very, I mean, how many lines of code is this? Very simple by using the GPT 3.5 Tubo, or you can use a different version if you want. And then using the roles, I'll encourage you to take a look at the code, but the simplicity of it is something to really call out. Let's do a streamlit frosty app that py. The app is running, it's booting up. Because this was the full frosty app, it's telling us work. Um, it's able to look at this database we just brought in. So the setup we did was to provision data in the marketplace in your own Snowflake instance that you want to use and ask and answer questions against. In natural language, there's a good example. You can copy this and can you show me the total deposits for all financial entities in the year 2020? All right. So this is not just some generic data to chat GPT. This is looking at your own data to give you answers. Frosty starts off by first provisioning the SQL statement, writing the SQL statement for us that it needs powerful. Then it jumps in into actually exit. Oh, this is, this is amazing. Now it jumps in into actually giving us the results. So this is the SQL statement. It validates that. It executes the result against uh, your Snowflake instance and voila, it comes up with results for us. If you go over to Snowflake history, you will see the command being executed. This is cool. This is cool. Let's go back and take even some more statements here. This is going to show us the query statements. It's running that with Snowpark and obviously it will give us a result as well. You're going to want to verify this result so like with anything else, but this is a step function. This is a massive leap from the experience we used to have before. Even if you don't want to go in and ask questions as such, all you want to do is potentially say something like, I'm, I'm curious about, there's something in Snowflake called the stages. So Snowflake stages, can you teach me? 
So this can become your data analytics buddy right in front of you, working with your own data in your own environment with your own syntax. Really, really powerful. Explaining what the Snowflake station is, giving us some examples. So there you uh, have it, a quick setup it. of Frosty. We've seen in Snowflake, I'm going to go ahead and close this app. To get this all set up, you're going to want to come over to the repo, clone the repo down, go over, get the cyber scene from the marketplace, grab the data set, get that into your instance. Once you've blown it over, there will be five scripts. There is one SQL statement. There is a bunch of uh, Python files. Use the SQL statement to provision the requirements on the Snowflake side. And then nothing to change on the Python so, uh, Streamlit applications. Coming over, duplicate the example, the TOML, get a secrets, the TOML, and update that to your own credentials. Very straightforward to do. Grab the open AI key, put that in there. Once you have that, that points to your own Snowflake instance. Now you're ready to rock and roll with the Frosty app by simply executing that app. The net result will be an app that runs like this. Very powerful. Now, there you go. Hopefully this was helpful with this demo tutorial, setting up Frosty on Snowflake, leveraging GPT 3.5 from OpenAI or your own data to supercharge your analytics. As always, if you found this valuable, share it with somebody who is going to get value out of it. If you have a question, you have a comment topic. We should demo, we should unpack, leave that in the comment section below. Links to all of this repo, the guide is very straightforward to follow. will all be in the comment section below. As always, thanks for watching and sticking to the end. You have been very awesome. I have been through here with Demo Hub and I will see you in the next demo.